Hi there everyone, my name is Chris, welcome back. Uh, today's video we're going to be taking a look at two uh, gas blowback pistols. We've got the MMP9 from VFC and the MMP9 from Tokyo Marui, both the full size versions. Uh, we'll take a look at a few of the differences between the two. Uh, you may be looking at an MMP and uh, you're trying to decide which one to go with. Um, obviously I've done have access to uh, a WE but thanks to uh, my buddy James, cheers for that mate, he's uh, lent me his TM just to take a look out for the video of my VFC, so yeah, we're going to put them down on the tabletop to start with and have a look at the externals and a bit of the internals. Okay, so here we got the VFC on the left, obviously TM on the right. Uh, pretty noticeable differences with the packaging straight away, but I won't spend ages on that. You know, end of the day, you'll keep the box for a short while and uh, and probably chuck it away. I've already had the VFC for a little while, um, so that's not exactly how it comes from the factory, but this is how the TM comes uh, straight out of the box. You've got your manuals and stuff up in the other half. Then it comes uh, with obviously the gun itself, BBs, uh, and a barrel bung, and a little detent that allows you to move the follower down the magazine so you can just fire the gun without any BBs, just using the gas. And of course, you've got the large and small back straps with a medium one installed pretty much similar story with the bfc the mag comes in the gun comes with a medium back strap installed with the large and smalls uh back straps as the extras um comes with you know some instructions and warranty and all that sort of stuff and the little serial number plate here underneath it says made in taiwan which i'm guessing they do for sort of shipping purposes and then you install this little serial number plate just a bit of glue also these uh, sort of plastic inserts, they add these dots to the sights on the VFC. They actually uh, come separately in a little plastic bag. So you can choose whether uh, you want to have those dots in there or not. Some people prefer plain black sights. Some people might want plain black front with dots in the rear or the other way around. I, I think um, probably having just the dot up front and plain black rear would be a way to go up on my other VFC. That's what I've done. Um, but this is my first one so I just fit them all in. Starting from the top of the guns, you'll notice the rear sight is different. Um, now the TM comes with painted on white dots uh, on all, th all three dots on the sight there, whereas you have the choice with the VFC. And the VFC has a sloped rear sight like so, whereas the TM has a step in it, which is always nice. Uh, you know, one-handed manipulations might not be a big deal in airsoft, but then there are also some disabled airsofters, so being able to rack the gun off uh, a hard surface or a belt or some other bit of gear using the rear sight could actually be pretty handy for some people. Uh, another big obvious external difference, TM has a manual safety lever. Now this is something some of the real steel guns have. Uh, I think generally people go for not having this. I believe it's a law in Japan that any gun has to have a physical manual safety like this. Some of the, like the Marui Glocks and the SIGs have weird sort of, like you push on the takedown lever or there's a fake plate under there or something like that for a, for a safety. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, but that can be removed. I've, I've uh, seen some people talk about this online and you can actually just pop off your back strap with the TM uh, obviously field strip take out this screw here and then um, take a few more components out and then sort of the, uh, the actual hammer mechanism housing all comes out you can take this safety out from both sides and use the gun uh, and it'll fully function without that so if you don't want that feature it's good that um, it's fairly easy to remove you don't really need any fancy tools or anything to do it another obvious big external difference is the slide VFC comes with a, a fairly all right metal slide, um, whereas the TM is plastic. It's not bad plastic, uh, but as soon as you pick up the VFC, it has that more sort of top heavy feeling, um, which is much more realistic, obviously, to the actual firearm. As far as the plastic on the frames goes, again, I've got to give the externals uh, the uh, sort of points as it were to the VFC on this one. It's a nice, it's just more of a quality feel to it. Generally, uh, this this TM stuff, it's good. It's not it's not too smooth, but it is smooth. It just feels a bit um, bit less bit less rigid, bit less realistic. Uh, you know, 
On the other hand, where the TM does win, in my opinion, is the rubberized backstrap. This has a much grippier, more rubberized feel to it on the actual backstrap itself. Uh, and when you actually grip the gun, it, it does feel nicer. The VFC is still pretty good, but I don't think this part is actually quite as nice. But uh, like I say, the, the plastic on the VFC frame overall, I would say, is the winner. Trademarks. You can see, um, apart from some very minor sort of font different, like sizing differences, trades on that side are the exact same. And for the most part, they're pretty similar on these, this side of the gun. Um, this white writing on the VFC is actually quite realistic to the real thing, whereas the TM just has this uh, Tokyo Marui stuff and, and a different serial number there. The uh, little medallions on the lower area of the frame are both accurate on both guns. The magazines for both guns uh, have almost the exact same thing on the base plates, quite realistic. Uh, all the sort of other markings are basically the same between the magazines. Uh, I found the magazines for both platforms, they both hold gas just fine. The TM holds uh, one more shot, I think it is, according to the manufacturers. But uh, yeah, no, uh, no massive notable differences there. When it comes to exchanging these back straps, um, the, the actual tool here that the VFC comes from is a slightly nicer plastic, and because it's quite fragile, um, you want to be a bit wary of it with the TM one. Um, it's obviously very easy to do. But yeah, with the with the Marui gun, because their plastics aren't quite as nice, this thing feels really weak and flimsy, so you want to be careful with that uh, and just make sure you, uh, when you do change those back straps, keep a good eye on the little tool there. Now, as far as function goes, actually shooting things, uh, I. The problem with the VFC, uh, as with the Stark Arms Glocks, which is you know just like the same company, is that it tends to do tends to do this a lot. If you don't if you don't let it like really give it some uh, give it some welly, it tends to do that quite often, and then you sort of have to forward assist sort of thing. It's quite easy to make it do that, and that is a problem the TM doesn't have. However, in a sort of weird reversal, the TM, um, like, if, again, if you don't really handle it quite roughly, as it were, or, you know, really give it some force, then it kind of feels initially as if the slide doesn't want to move. It's quite a, especially when it's not cocked and then it's brand new, it can feel really stiff on the, on the actual cocking. Um, so yeah, a bit of a weird opposite going on there. Now, the magazine releases, you need to be quite positive with these things. If you let go of it, it will just fall out part way and you, like, you've got to shake it a little bit to get it out of there. Um, happens with both of the guns. As you can see, you sort of, like a lot of other guns, if I was holding it there, that would slide right out, whereas this you need to, so you just make sure you give it a good press and you'll be all right. Stripping them down works exactly the same between the two. Um, there's a little bit more of a niggle with the VSC. Takes a fraction of a moment longer to put it back together, but nothing massive. And um, slide lock levers, ambidextrous on both. However, the, the VFC doesn't quite lock in quite as securely. It can kind of feel like a little nudge would sort of, uh, you know, knock it and let the slide go forward. However, it does reliably work every time, whether you press the uh, right side or the left side levers on the TM. If you really, if you really wedge that up in there, pressing this side sometimes doesn't work. It'll probably, yeah. Of course, yeah. Law of performance. Um, when I was testing this out before, I was having some some problems where pressing the right hand side lever wasn't working, but it seems to be okay now, yeah, as far as I can tell. There's that sort of slight stiffness. Let's see if I can make it do it. No? Okay. Maybe that's because it's a very new gun. So yeah, both of those are both of those working okay. Now as far as using them, you know you got similar sights, you know, same controls and all that sort of thing, especially if you take the safety off the TM. One big problem with the TM. Uh, is this trigger. Now, I know a lot of airsofters aren't that fussy about this sort of thing, but the trigger on the TM 
is, uh, in my opinion, it's nasty. It's spongy. It's it over travels. If you watch, sp spongy, 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 and then click, and then you've got all this space it can still travel, and then you've got to let it all the way back out to there. There's the reset, and then fire off again there, and then over travel back to here. It's not. I'm not a fan. You know, when you're actually using a game, yeah, you probably won't notice too much. But the VFC, it just, it's just smooth, clean break, and it's right there, right at the back of the trigger guard. Reset. There you go. Straight, straight, clean, predictable wall. Um, I think it's the sort of thing you've got to really pay attention to to actually notice, but. Um, yeah, that, that over travel on the TM, if you look really close, that's, to me, that's kind of nasty, but, you know, like I say, it varies person to person. As I mentioned before, stripping them down, just lock it back, rotate the lever. Start with a frame. Now... As you can see, there's some differences there. Um, towards the front, pretty much the same. Uh, I'm not sure what this screw inside the TM actually holds. The Glocks are quite notorious for breaking there, so I'm hoping they've remedied that. As far as the hammer mechanism goes, obviously what, what counts is back here. So these are the components that need to be you know, um, well made generally. Uh, the VFC doesn't have a roller on the hammer just here, so the slide's going to be grinding against that every time. Whereas on the TM, you've got this roller bearing here, which is nice, and just, the hammer's just a bit, uh, it's a chunkier bit of metal, really. It, it looks a bit nicer to me, it looks like it probably lasts a bit longer. Inside the slides, one key difference VFC here on the left, switch that, and that's full auto. Um, some people reckon that's more to go wrong. Uh, I've never tested it. I just leave mine like so. TM does not have that. Um, got a longer actual nozzle here on the TM. And I think that's probably for the weaker gases they tend to use in Japan. Adjustment wheel on the VFC, just down here for the hop up. TM, I think it's actually designed to be used when the gun's still assembled. Yeah, you can actually get to the hot wheel just here. It's going to be a nightmare to show on the camera, but you can, with the slide locked open, you can get to the hop up just there. Also got a silver or chrome looking guide rod, spring guide rod on the VFC here. Uh, a shorter dust cover, uh, I'm presuming that's what it's called, but yeah, VFC is more there. Probably being made of metal, it doesn't need to be. I'm not sure which is closer to the real steel, um, but yeah, there's a difference, I believe. The standard Smith & Wesson gun, the real thing, has these sort of chrome colour guide rods, so that's maybe a slight detractor for the TM, but I mean, you could just take some bloody wire wool and scrub that up until it was shiny. Another sort of noticeable difference, kind of a nice feature on the TM, is uh, on the hop unit of the TM. It's got this little piece of brass that, um, on the actual firearm. You look through this uh, witness opening here to see whether you've got a round loaded. So, like I say, on the hop up, just got this piece of brass so that when the barrel is fitted into the gun you can just see it there whereas I'll take the VFC apart it doesn't have that also the hop system is a bit different on the VFC uh, how that will relate to accuracy I'm not sure yet um, unfortunately I don't really have much of a much in the way of a sort of long range to, to test the guns. Um, I think the TM is pretty pretty safe bet that it's going to shoot better. Uh, let's see if we can get the inner barrel on hot out of the TM outer barrel. I'm not sure how doable it is. Just going to bend the plastic slightly. There we go. Okay, so VFC, nice feature. They've got a 
cut in the inner barrel and an o-ring that'll help your accuracy keep it the inner barrel more centered within the outer uh, actually the the hop systems are more similar than i thought you see they you just got this plate that pushes down on the hop rubber uh, on the two of them and uh, as you as you adjust these wheels It's not a huge range of adjustment, but it basically moves this plate. I'm not sure if it'll be actually, not sure if actually visible on the camera. You can just about make out that it's moving. Ah, there's the, <laughs> there's the brass piece, the TM. So that is not permanently affixed on. We know now. Obviously, plastic outer barrel with the TM as well, and the. BFC comes with a metal one which does wear pretty quickly. I've like barely shot this thing. I've, I've sort of racked the slide a lot. But yeah, this uh, that barrel paint is wearing away really quickly. Okay, so that's the inners back into the outer barrel. So we'll finish reassembling both guns now. I tend to think the BFC is a little bit easier, but then I've not tried it a lot of times. Let's see, the only caveat with the BFC is you want to be careful putting the slide on. Lock the slide to the rear and then I find you, you want to pull forward slightly on the recoil spring guide. That allows you to get the lever up. Uh, on the TM, obviously all these plastic parts will uh, pretty much guaranteed equate to better gas efficiency especially in the winter months also this TM has this little spigot on the spring guide rod so it locks much more positively into the outer barrel which is something the VFC lacks you don't need to worry about pulling on the guide rod with the TM just flick the lever up no worry shame about the nasty trigger but uh, hey ho now, uh, I don't have a particularly long range to be able to test you know, what these guns really do at, in terms of their accuracy at ranges, but we'll take a few shots with both, literally just to show you guys and you can uh, make up your own minds really, see what, uh, see what you guys think of these. Okay, so first things first, before we do any shooting, put these bad boys on, um, we'll start off with the VFC, take a few shots with this. open. Uh, feels pretty good, makes good noise. I'm not sure if it was shooting high or low. I wasn't really getting many actually uh, within the target box there. Uh, see what happens with the TM. Huh. Interesting. Uh, looks like you can't rack it with the uh, safety on. I did not know that. So yeah, safety's on, can't pull the trigger. Um, obviously both of them have the inbuilt trigger safety where you can't pull the trigger unless you actually pull this lower lever that moves that little lock out of the way there. But then the TM has this manual safety as well. And locks open. Um, definitely seemed to be a bit more predictable where the shots were actually going. The TM is snappier. Uh, the recoil is faster. And, uh, there's not noticeably. Obviously, with a gas pistol, you know, gas airsoft pistol like this, you're not gonna 
kept muchness or recoil anyway. Obviously there's a there's a different noise between this and the VFC. Like I say, this the slide moves that bit quicker on the TM, which is nice. Uh, but that trigger, it was hor that was fucking me up. I was trying to reset it and I was having to like let go way more and pull it back further to fire and all that sort of thing. Sights on both of them. I mean these these three dots on the Marui is definitely uh, you know they're good. No issues there with uh, with feeding on either of them. No problems there. Lock both lock back as I say. Both worked as they should. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go grab the VFC and we'll uh, round up the video. So TM versus VFC, which MP to go for? As with anything airsoft wise, any sort of gear purchase, it depends. TM costs more. Obviously, the exact price is going to vary uh, by shop. You can get the VFC for a fair bit cheaper. It comes with a metal slide. The plastic of the frame is nicer. Trigger's much nicer. I prefer the, the lack of a manual safety. Um, metal out of barrel as well as the slide. TM, nasty trigger, all plastic. Yeah, even, you know, again, obviously the frame's meant to be plastic between the both, but the, the TM plastic isn't as nice. Trades aren't as nice either. On the other hand, I prefer this, this rear sight on the TM. This paint wear on the outer barrel on the VFC is pretty unpleasant looking. Um, the recoil action on the TM is much snappier, much faster. Just just feels more uh, just snappy, really, like I say. Um, some people might prefer having that option of the safety. You can remove it. Nicer rear back straps on these internals. You know, short of me just standing here shooting mag after mag and just reloading and just shooting. These two guns, I can't tell you which is going to last longer. I can guess, I can estimate based on experience with these two brands before that the TM is going to be uh, a farther shooting pistol, more accurate pistol at pretty much most ranges. Not massively more accurate, but more accurate. Like I say, it'll sling the BBs further, and I think this gun will last you a lot longer. Uh, so you do pay that bit more initially, but I think you'll probably get a lot more service life uh, out of this. As an indoor player, for me, it's good for VFC. Um, I like the fact I can pay less money and get that metal slide and out of barrel, nicer frame. The fact that it, it probably won't uh, sling the BBs as far doesn't affect me. I'm shooting at like 10 meters, 15 meters anyway. For the outdoor player, especially in the colder climbs, TM's gotta be the way, that plastic slide, you're just gonna get more shots per magazine. That's a simple fact. I don't even need to do a comparison, uh, you know, like try putting them both in the fridge and, and doing it to tell you that. So the VFC represents slightly better value, especially for that CQB indoor player. But for the outdoor player, colder climates, TM's the one to go for. So it all, all depends on your circumstances. The other thing to consider is all of that I've just said is based on the, uh, the concept that you're just going to keep these pistols stock. When it comes to aftermarket support, that's a big thing. There's pretty much nothing for VFC. Now this is my second VFC MOP9 um, and this is about as customised as you can make it. Angry gun threaded barrel on there, that's literally like the only aftermarket part that there is. Fitted a Surefire X300U and my buddy Alex from the States very kindly stippled the frame and the back straps for me and uh, undercut the trigger guard and all that good stuff so this one is a particularly nice gun to hold. However, at this time, and I think probably for the foreseeable future, that is as custom uh, as you will be able to make it. With this TM, there will be aftermarket support up the fucking yin yang. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's already salient arms type slides that you can switch out, outer barrels, probably new triggers. Uh, obviously, you could also stipple the frame. There will be different sights and other internal bits and all the internals for the slide. There'll be other stuff for that. There'll probably be different magazines, magazine extensions. Uh, you know, I mean, just the slide kits alone. You know, so if someone like Guns Modify or Airsoft Surgeon, they come out with these kits um, in the salient and Costa custom styles, so you can fit out to these. And there's none of that for the VAC platform. So yeah, again, another plus point for the TM. If you want to really customize the gun. Go crazy with it, get all these uh, you know cut out slides and stuff like that. Go for that because you won't 
you, you're probably not ever going to get that option with BFC. I think that uh, about sums it up, guys. I think pretty much covered the stuff that matters. Um, and I haven't shown like a paper accuracy comparison, but I think, in my opinion, unless you get about 50 of these and 50 VFCs and shoot hundreds of rounds and you know use really perfect, super high quality BBs. I don't think it's really scientific to just shoot one of one platform and one from the other platform at paper just by hand without using machine rest and just say yes that one is more accurate than the other. Uh, to me that doesn't necessarily work. So hopefully uh, if anyone out there was trying to decide between these two perhaps um, or maybe hadn't considered one of them, uh, that's given you some more information. So thanks for watching guys, uh, like I say I hope it was useful. Social media and shit is down in the description box below. Check that out. Pretty much daily updates and stuff on Facebook and all that good shit. Uh, cheers to all the subscribers and all the guys hitting the thumbs up and stuff like that. That helps a lot and is appreciated. I'd say every video is still as true uh, as every other time I've said it. So yeah, thanks guys. I'll see you next time.